All right, well, I did Amir Vans. Now, I don't know what this is actually called now. Because what do you mean? On the album, I didn't even pick this up on, I think, this, the final song or the second last song. Um, plastic or what was it? What's the second last song called? Um, what is it called? Sunday night. I, he says the night. He says Emmanuel, but he says it differently. He says it like Emmanuel. Oh. So I don't know. Maybe I was just yeah. He says Messiah here. I'm Emmanuel. Maybe he was trying to like twist it to twist make it, it rhyme. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about this album, which, uh, whether you agree with Amir or not, he definitely has his uh, his own side of the story, and uh, Brockhampton has their own side, and their fans have definitely chosen. I think there's a lot of toxic fans out there yeah. um, for Brockhampton that are against um, Amir, and I do know a lot of fans, and I've seen a lot of fans actually just come out and not worry about it. Like, this is Brockhampton now. This is a mere now. And one of the things, one what someone suggested was they should just take him off all the songs and then just put Brockhampton featuring Amir. Just have it as like the group, but then oh, yeah. have him featured because that he's not in the group anymore. But um, I think this album is a bit more ambiguous towards the, uh, the references to Brockhampton rather than um, Dearly Departed, which was very... Um, explicit, very mm. obviously against Amir. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about those songs um, on this album, like Los Angeles um, and like Plastic, where he really goes into it. But all the politicking and all the choosing sides behind are beside. I actually think this is a really good album, um, EP rather. Um, the How beats, long is it? Sorry to interrupt. Six, six tracks. I think it's yeah, about I thought 18 it was minutes short. or something like that. Um, it is quite short, but um, definitely worth a listen. Definitely. Um, if you can fit in 18 minutes of your life or 20 minutes of your life, definitely go out and listen to it while you're making a sandwich or driving to work or <laughs> whatever you're doing. Definitely worth a go. But Is the, it sandwich eating material? Yeah. You bob your head to okay. eating the sandwich then, yeah. <laughs> um, the Beats did leave a little to be desired. He actually did get some really good producers on here um, because he still is signed to RCA. Um which is who Brockhampton signed with, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're still signed to the same label. Um, but he is now working with... Um, what? What's... Is it Winston Wolf? I think he's working with Winston Wolf LLC. Yeah, Winston Wolf LLC, which I believe, from what I've read, there's not much about them. Like, you can't even Google them. So, from what I've read and from sort of what I'm seeing around is that they work with artists that are sort of perceived negatively in the oh, okay. media and they sort of try and bring them back. Um, so he's oh, definitely uh, going in the right direction, I think. Yeah. If that's true, like that could be wrong. That's just what I've uh, I've read. Um, and I mean, that's a pretty cool um, yeah. organization if it is. Um, but I can sort of tell that Amir has never done beat selection. I assume okay. Kevin or uh, Champion or or even Jaden Smith has helped with the yeah. Brockhampton beat selection um, because he he doesn't pick um, many expansive beats. They're all very uh, hollow, very skeletal, very um, stripped back, very bare. Like the first track, um, Emmanuel, is just like a dun 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 dun. Like, it's just, like, a baseline. Okay. Like, that's all it is. Nothing. There's no layers. Oh, wow. Like, it, there is obviously layers, but, like, that's, like, the main piece. Like, you can't yeah. really hear yeah, anything There's not else. much past that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he, he dwells heavily on his past, obviously. This album feels like a, a, a look back at what he's done. It's very dark. It's talking about drugs, talking about um, his mental health problems. He does say he is bipolar on this. I don't know if that's true. Um, he's, he talks about living in hospitals. He talks about, um, being institutionalized, um, and things like that. And obviously one of the overarching themes is that he feels wronged by Brockhampton. Um, mm. and he does say that, and I somewhat agree if he wasn't famous, no one would care yeah. um, about what he did because he was 18 at the time. She was 17, which is legal, um, in Texas where he was. 
but I think it just got blown way out of proportion. And obviously yeah. the the robbing thing aside, yeah. which I don't. We still is that confirmed? I'm not sure. Maybe it has been confirmed. I think. Well, as far as I know, we've only heard about it from Brockhampton members. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm I don't not know sure. if Amir's even addressed it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on that either. But and he does say um, I'm going to read some lyrics out later. But yeah, he does say that he thinks his friends left a bit too easily. Um, oh yeah, which could happen. And, I think the fans definitely, the cancel culture. Yeah. If they didn't get rid of Amir, the whole group could get cancelled, much like yeah. Amir did. So I think they did it for the greater good. And I think that <laughs> Amir sort of said, like, if we weren't big, you'd still be my friends. Like, if we weren't famous and this happened and someone told you like that, like yeah. you know what I mean? So, and I guess it has its own part. Like, obviously, they're a, they're a group and they're in the public eye. They don't want that to be a part of them, but. Either way. Yeah. Um, and I think that this album obviously is going to be, this EP is obviously going to focus on lyrical delivery and lyrical content. That's what Amir is all about. Yeah. I think that he's had the hardest verses of the Brockhampton saturation era. Um, and the hardest one, like, like the first song we ever hear um, is off Heat. The, the song Heat on Saturation 1. The first line that we hear is Amir Van saying, uh, where did I write it? I don't know it, but I just want to don't don't want to get it wrong. He's like, I got pipe dreams of crack rocks, crack rocks and stripper poles. That's just hard. Yeah, that's just like straight up hard when he comes in and and I think honestly this album, this EP, I keep calling it an album. It's the same thing basically. This EP feels more inspired and more um more like sort of more energy has gone into it than anything Brockhampton's released since the Saturation Trilogy. I yeah. think that I would prefer to listen to this over Ginger and Iridescence easily. Like, I think that those two albums are severely lacking creative flair um, and just, like, a, and the hard-hitting edge. Like, the... I just think it's no, nowhere near as good as this. Amir sounds hungry. He sounds like he wants to get back in the game and he's really putting everything um, into his music, which he talks about on the album, too. Um, I don't think he could carry this for 60 minutes, 65, 70 minutes, um, like a lot of full-length feature albums are going to be doing, um, like your Kanye West's um, Chance the Rapper, unfortunately, um, and other things. Even Brockhampton had pretty long albums, Yeah, have had long albums recently, so I don't think he can do it for 45, 60, and, and plus. Well, Ginger um, was about 50 minutes. Yeah, exactly, but... For the 20 minutes, he captured my attention and, yeah, was really great at what he did. Um, he opens the album, Emmanuel, introspective track. Uh, the The beats don't suit him on this, but he reflects on his past um, and the consequences of what happens and what he's going through now. He actually, it sounds like he's making excuses at, at one point in the song. He says, he says uh, I'm a product of my mistakes. And then he lists them. He says... Uh, where, where did I write it? I'm all over the place right now. <laughs> um, he says, uh, I'm an addict like my sister. I'm a product of my father. I am sick and I need a doctor. And he and he sort of goes on like that. Um, and it's... The, but there's a really powerful passage right at the end um, that I'm going to read the lyrics for if I can find my uh, Firefox. Here we go. Um, is this it? Yeah. Um, he says, my sermon is delivered, rolling swishes, writing scriptures, many pains and many issues. This is my written crucifixion. I'm a singer song of David. I remember Wayne and baby. I done seen them neighbors leaking, screaming, Jesus, come and save me. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I just know that life ain't easy. Getting harder while I'm breathing. Neighbors die inside of beamers. They don't even need a reason. Guns cl get to clapping, get to squeezing. Neighbors killing, it ain't easy. Rent due and it ain't easy. Calling out his name, but he ain't breathing. Mama crying, it ain't easy. Hard times, it ain't easy. That is dope. That's hard. Um, yeah, and then again, earlier on in the song he says, um, I saw violence in my home. I seen shit I can't forget. I got anxieties and tendencies and memories repressed. Ripped this shit up off my chest, put the bullets in the clip. Pressed the muzzle to my face and pulled the trigger. Now I'm... And then he just like blanks out. Obviously, oh, yeah. the word dead there. Um, and then, it's so hard to end it all. I just want to make it right. It's so hard to live it all. All these obstacles in life made it hard for us all. Made a fuck up on my life. I'll give anything at all to take back a little time. 
So really good stuff on that. Um, Los Angeles talks about um, he talks about the band Brockhampton. Okay. Uh, he does say um, on this basically he's saying that Los Angeles was the root of all these issues. He says that when he went to Los Angeles, he signed a deal which he lost his innocence on. His friends um, left in Los Angeles. He fell in love in Los Angeles and he lost himself in Los Angeles. He was no longer himself. He can lose himself in Los Angeles. Exactly. It's like uh, Gucci Mane's The the Source talk. He got got lost in the Source. (laughs) Los Angeles instead. Yeah. And that's where the line is. I I made major changes to myself. I'm still a danger to myself. Still might grab the stainless off the shelf, which is just hard. Yeah. Um, but I do have the song. I actually time stamped it this week so I could find exactly what I wanted. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm That's onto it. Preparation. I am onto it. <laughs> this is the song Glock 19, which has been touted as the best on the album, and I do believe it is um, as well. Um, it goes extremely hard and. Yeah, my favorite on the album. Definitely okay. my top 10 of the year, too. It is... I'm going to give it a listen on my, my drive home, then. Yep, I'm going to play it now, though. All right. No, I'm, I'm in the whole album. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to play it from about 1.45, and then uh, I'm not sure how long I'll play it for. <laughs> really yeah, I see what you mean about the production. Like yeah. Oh. I like it. That's a hard line yeah. too. It says, my heart's still heavy. I've been looking for my friends. Yeah. Everybody leave everybody in the end, which is hard. Yeah. Um, and then we have the two final tracks because there's only six and I've already run through four. <laughs> um, Saturday, ah, oh, Saturday night. That's a Khalid song. It's a good song. Uh, <laughs> Sunday night. Uh, this one, he's just sort of talking shit on this one. It's not really uh, all that... Uh, enticing don't really like it too much it's just quite um bare quite um i actually didn't talk about pop trunk which is an ode to dj screw from houston which is where yep. amir um grew up and was sort of reps a lot i don't know if he was born there but i know he reps it a lot um yeah it's and it has a pimp c sample right at the end uh chopped and screwed with him sort of remixed into it but wasn't a bad song a lot of people didn't like it because of the beat it's very um like samey to literally every other trap song that's out there i'll play it um i wonder if this if i go back yeah this is the beat like this is not a mere van music no especially not under that line yeah yeah it's a cool sounding beat, but not for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a pretty stock standard uh, um, trap beat. So mm. nothing too great on that one. Yeah. Sun, um, Sunday night, not all that special either. I wasn't a, um, not the biggest um, fan of it, but I did like the, if I can find the line. Yeah, here it is here. Um, so the final verse, I did like the final verse. So he says, Neighbors supposed to stick up for their family, but we see they don't. I got all that gutter and that meaning that they fiend him for. Neighbors supposed to stick up for their brothers, but we see they don't. So obviously talking about Brockhampton there. Yeah. And he says, I got all I that, like that gutter lot. and that meaning, as in like, he's like the missing link of Brockhampton. Like yeah. they're missing sort of that cutting edge. So not the cutting edge, but like that hard edge. Like yeah. where they push it right to the boundary. Yeah. Because that's what makes music great. When you push yeah. it right to the edge and people are like, is he going to do it? Yeah. Like Eminem is the greatest example of that. Oh, like he, went, so, yeah. he went too far, but because of how good he was, people kept moving it back. They were like, yeah. oh, no, he can do that. <laughs> then he went further again and then they're like, oh, okay, he can do that. Um, that's why he's not getting away with it now because he's not as like popular anymore. Yeah. He got, he got roasted for 
um, dropping the homophobic slur, yeah. which he said, I don't know, hundreds of times in the past, ten years ago, yeah, yeah and exactly. it was never an issue. But yeah. then again, I suppose now that like awareness the, is yeah, much higher. Yeah, yeah. The, but the even then, it, it still wasn't yeah, exactly. widely accepted back then. Yeah, exactly. So I think that they they are missing Amir definitely, yeah. and I think they'll look at this album, this EP, and say, like, yeah, that's that's we good we stuff. Need that. Like, yeah, if we could have that. Without the controversy, but, yeah, like, that's exactly what they would say. Like yeah. If that, if that, if that never happened, right, in a bubble, yeah, I think Brockhampton was like took off, and then they just have sort of petered out, and now they're going back down again. I think they could keep going up with Amir. Yeah, I, I don't think Amir was the most talented in the group. I think that's still Kevin Abstract. Yeah, but um, he think, he did bring something to yeah, it. Yeah, I think I said last year on the previous show when I was talking about Brockhampton. I said that the only two that I can see having a legitimate solo career were Amir Van and yeah. Kevin Abstract. And it's true. I don't think Matt Champion, if you showed me him, I wouldn't know who it is. A picture of him. Like he's, just like. Like a, he's just like oh, a... Black Bear might be able to. I feel like they're just like, at this point, they're just like the band. Yeah. They're just like, they're not like their own people. But Amir, and, and he actually um, alludes to that. He says, I'm more than a boy in a band. I am, there's more to me as a man. Or something oh, like I like that. that. He does say that. Um, which is obviously a ref- reference to Brockhampton being called yeah. a boy band and wanting to be called a boy band as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, really great album. Um, and then, yeah, Plastic, he just sort of... Um, he talks about people want all this plastic stuff, but he wants chrome, as in guns and, yeah. and things like that. And it was a really great... Um, really great end. It's, a, it's an unapologetic sort of this is my life this is what happened I'm going to own my part of it but I'm not going to let Brock Hampton and um, certain members of the media or other artists get away with what they've said about me I'm going to say my past um, I'm going to let it all out there I'm an addict I'm uh, mental health I have mental health health issues um, and yeah it's coming coming to the to the forefront and yeah that's it basically I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 Ooh. Definitely worth a listen. Um, there's four songs out of six that I will listen to again. Pop okay. Trunk and Sunday Night, maybe not. But again, like I said, Glock 19 is in my top 10 of the year. So definitely, okay. if you can get in the top 10, like one song, you're yeah. probably doing pretty well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Definitely go and check it out. Yeah, it's mad I will. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I did. <laughs> that's a wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> 